Good evening, sir. Hi, Kenya. Hi, sir. Um, you guys were in a class? Uh, yes, sir. There's a class before, but I, I just got home, so I just joined in a class, sir. Okay. All right. So let's see if the other persons are here. Which question are you supposed to present on? Um, exchange rates, sir. International exchange rates. Okay. So I'm going to make you present. Uh, all right. Just, you know, let's wait until the others come, okay? Hopefully somebody turns up. Okay, sir. Okay.
All right, so we're going to start in a few minutes. Just give me one sec. Um, we, where's the other person? All right, let's hope that one person joins. All right, just give me a, we need at least one more person, but, um, Rachel, who's right? I, I don't know this name, Rachel or? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Have you been coming to class? I, I, your name seems very new to me. Yes, sir. 
not every time. Okay, all right. So let's wait a few minutes. We need at least one more person. I don't want to start the class with two, but if, if one more person doesn't come in four minutes, then we're going to begin, okay? Um, will I be presenting today? Yes, you are. You will be. Okay. Okay. All right, so now that we have three persons, um, I'm going to finish up the lecture that I started last week. Um, and then we can get into the presentations. I need to close some of the, the tabs. So give me one sec.
All right, guys, I think what I'm going to do first is teach you how to write an academic paper. And then I finish up the lecture because um, I, I see people struggling to actually cite sources and all of that. So let me do that first and then I'll finish up the lecture and then we can get into um, get into the presentations. All right, can anybody tell me what are the three, um, when you're writing an essay or an, uh, when you're writing an essay, what are the three main elements that makes up the essay? Does anybody um, know the three elements that must be included in the essay? Hello, Kenya. Uh, the introduction, body, and the conclusion. All right, so the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. All right, so that's what we're going to discuss, but there's a, there's a systematic way in which it has to be organized. And I think that is the issue for some persons because somebody even sent me a paper to review for them from the class. And when I looked at it, there was no citation at all in the paper. And I'm saying, I'm sure if I upload it to turn it in, then the student would have probably unintentionally plagiarized the paper. And I specifically use the term unintentional because I know in most instances, students don't deliberately want to plagiarize, which is that they are not sure how to properly cite information. So I'm going to do that first before I get into the actual um, um, finishing the essay. And I also want to speak about, well, in the other class I'll speak, in the final class I'll speak about the final exam. I'll also speak about the research paper. Uh, probably what I'll do in today's class is to kind of help you to start um, work on your research paper. But I encourage you to actually work in peers because I find that that is um, much easier for you guys to do. So I'm going to share a screen. Let me just ensure that I have closed anything that I consider to be sensitive information. Let's close this because, um, should I close my net? Let me close my Netflix, Talisa, my Facebook, yeah. All right, um, so I'm gonna share screen so that, all right, so are you seeing my screen? Sir. Yes. Evening. I have a little internet problem. I'm soon join back here. I'll log out and join. Okay, no problem. Yeah, man. Let me get to look to see if I internet. Okay. All right. So as was said, I think was said by Kenya about having um, an essay having three parts. So you have an introduction, you have body paragraphs, and you have a conclusion and you also have a reference list which is important but the introduction itself also has three elements an introduction has an opening uh, a background and a thesis statement so the first so how to begin your how to begin an introduction in other words as i said before an introduction has an opening and probably i need to let me put it put the slide um Probably I need to put it here, like right here, because I kind of take it for granted that everybody knows. It has an opening. It has background sentences. And it has, and it ends with a thesis. Um, so let us... Um, we did one, two, three. No, I don't think we need one, two, three. Um, let's double space paragraph. So an introduction has an opening background and it has a thesis. It ends with a thesis statement. All right, um, let's do that. So now we're going to get into the different parts of the introduction. And if, uh, if, if, if I am, when I'm teaching, you have any questions, then you can um, ask, okay? So how to begin your introduction? 
So what this is showing you are different ways of how you can begin your introduction. So one way of how you can be begin your introduction, you can use a direct quote. And we're going to look at examples um, of that. You can use brief statistics. You can open your introduction with a definition. It can be a famous quote, a startling statement, a comparison, which means that you're showing similarities. Probably you're looking at similarities between um, how two countries um, benefit from a particular, from the world, from their participation in the World Trade Organization. Um, it can be contrast where you're showing differences in terms of, it could be that your opening, your opening for your introduction shows the difference in terms of the benefits from um, a bilateral agreement or a multilateral agreement or from um, the World Bank or from um, um, foreign exchange or whatever it is, all right, an opinion. So these are examples. So these are examples of, of, of an opening. So remember we said that the, 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 how you can begin your introduction these are the different ways of how you can begin your introduction. And I'll kind of post some of it in the, in, the, in the chat so that when I ask you certain questions that you can answer. And then the following slide now, I want, so these are different examples of how um, you can start an introduction. So diabetes is the leading cause of death among children in the Caribbean. And I probably, what we'll probably do is to look, is try to write examples that are more specific to the course. Um, Shakespeare once stated that the world is a stage and we're all actors pointing to humans inability to control the inevitable until recently everything written about Indian women in the Caribbean was written by men photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make food um, until recently men never considered their body image and the other one is why should we not all hate one another can you based on the examples of how you can start an introduction can you tell me and I posted it in the chat, which, which type of start um, or opening for the introduction is the first one? Anybody? Sorry, you want the first one of the um, examples? Yeah, so which one would it be based on the examples that I've given you? The direct quote. So direct quote can only have, direct quote would have to be quotation marks. Um, I know why you said direct quote, because you're seeing the last name and the year in, in parenthesis right here. Let me, and it really should have a comma. Let me go back here. It really should have a comma. So this is actually called paraphrase, but not direct quote. But I know why you would say direct quote. Um, can you think of another one? What else could it be if it's not direct quote? And remember guys, the more you participate, the better you're going to understand this because it is needed for the research paper and actually a tutorial paper, all right? Sir, what is that a, start, a startling statement? Could be seen as a startling statement, yes. It okay. could be seen as a, a startling statement. Um, could it be anything else? Sir. Uh -huh. Sir, a brief, brief statistic. Um, it could be seen as brief statistic because when you say the leading cause of death, it means that it's coming from something. But I would also think that it is a statement, but oh, it's not there. That's why you guys didn't um, say it. So it could be, why is not there? A statement of fact. Why is this not there? A statement of fact. Could you see it as a statement of fact? Yes, sir, because they're actually stating facts, stating that um, and that is exactly, that is true. Something I can research and see that it's, it's true. Right, exactly. So it's a statement of fact, and it should have been on the list. I'm not sure why um, I, I, I keep using the, the slides and I edit, it, I edit them, but <laughs> yeah, so it should have been there. What about the one that says photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make food? Which opening is that? Yeah, definition. Yes, yeah, so that would be definition, right? What about the one that says, until recently, everything written about Indian women in the Caribbean was written by men? Mm -hmm. 
Which opening could that be? Sir, com comparison? Um, not really comparison, but I would see it as more irony. You know, the fact that men are the ones writing about women. Sir, that's not there. Oh, that's not there. Oh, my God. Or it could be seen as contrast, but more irony. That's not there, my Lord. Let me put it there. Thanks for pointing that out. So uh, several of them that are should be there that are not there. No? So irony is one. You could have um, a summary. Let's call it a summary statement. Let's put summary statement. C-A-T-E-N-E-M-T. -E Let's bring this back a little so that we, um, we could have, which one we said was not there again? We said irony or oh, irony, I've added irony, right? So it could be irony. Why are these not there? So let me reshare this. Um, remember to download it and save it um, in your, your thing. Let's reshare this with the additional ones. All right, so yeah, so there are different ways of how you can start your introduction. So remember now, the introduction has an opening, it has background and it has a close, which is the thesis, right? So we continue with, so now we move on from the opening to the background. So usually we say to students, two to three background statement sentences. Some students can have a little bit more. So it says, after you have your opening sentence, your opening sentence um, can be, your opening can be one or two sentences. Um, then you have your background sentences. These sentences state the subject establishes the significance of the subject and provide a context for the narrow topic or general focus of the essay. So I would, how I would state this is that you, when you get a question, you try to ensure that you understand how to answer the question. So let's look at the tutorial um, question um, and work it from that end. Um, so let's go here and go in assessment, tutorial. So let us say that you are doing um, a question on, uh, let me not do anything that is too close. Let me do something that is as, okay. So I can do, for example, let's say that my, my question is this. Let's say that this is my question, right? This is my question. So I've been given this question to answer. Mm. Let's undo it from there. Let's put it here. It should, it should be a little. Why is it appearing like that? What's wrong? Let's take this out and see if it works here. Why is it coming all the way up there? Because something up here is, can I paste it now? No. All right, let's do this. Let me see if it works here. Yeah, there you go. Let's say that you are given this question, right? Um, Referencing a specific region or country, explore the impact of any one or two international businesses. Um, on explore the in, of any one or two international businesses, regional trade agreement, or international organization. Right. So that's really what the question is. So remember, now you get a question like this. Now you want to first in your mind. Um, say okay i need an introduction so your introduction you have your opening you have your background and you have your thesis which we are going to get into a sec so let's just have it there as a as, as a as a so let's go back now to the background right so it says after you have your opening sentence or sentences it is important now to write your two to three background sentences these sentences state the subject 
whatever the, the focus of the paper is, establishes the significance of the subject and provide a context for the narrowed topic or general um, essay. So usually what I say to students is that you have to be very, um, very smart in terms of how you open the paper because your opening sentence for your introduction will determine the, kind, the direction of the background sentences. The background sentences really gives context to the paper. What exactly are you trying to, um, what exactly is the, 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 the focus of the paper, right? Um, and then know, and I can give you some examples of background sentences. So let's look at an example, which is unrelated to the course. So, this is the, this is, so kind of ignore the top and just focus on the part that says introduction. So first of all, can you tell me what type of opening sentence um, is used by the writer in this introduction? What type of opening sentence is this? Hello. Can you repeat, sir? What type of opening is this in the introduction? Remember, we just talked about um, the three components of an introduction. What type of opening sentence is this in this introduction? based on the list that I shared in the chat. Guys, the only way you can learn is if you're talking you know, and this is- Sorry, 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 hold on. I got, I'm downloading the, the, the new screenshot I had sent with the other stuff. Oh, you want to watch that? Where would it be a starting statement? Are you sure? Look at it very carefully. So a statement of fact. Look at very carefully. There are certain things that are there that should give away the type of start it is. Sir, a direct quote. Thank you. It's a direct quote. It opens with a it opens with quotation marks and it closes with quotation marks, last name, year, and page number. So it opens with a direct quote. Everybody sees that that the opening is a direct quote. Do we see that? Yes, sir. The sentence that comes after now, so all of these sentences, the, the, these sentences, no, the sentences that come after would be the background. Do I put it in red? No, I don't hate that color. It looks very strange. The sentences, let's undo this thing. So these would be the background sentences. But if you look, it says it was reported, notice this word, it was reported. And then how does the other sentence start? How does the following sentence start? Guys, remember you have to talk. There's the only way you can learn it, all right? I cannot talk to myself. How does the following sentence after the opening start? Sorry, all right, read it. I just ask, how does the following sentence start? The second sentence. Sir, this report attests to the fact that child abuse is a social illness. All right. Continue. So, do we see which word is report is which word is repeated? Um, child, sir, or in the first sentence and the second sentence, which word? Oh, sir, report. report. Thank you. So, it was reported. This is a direct quote. So, the second sentence that says this report attests to the fact that. That is what is called analysis. In other words, the person is linking what is said in the direct quote to help to build the background. 
What does that mean? It means that whenever you cite a source in a paper, wherever in the paper, the sentence that comes after must be an interpretation of what the source has to say. And that is what is called critical analysis. So you should never cite a source. Then after you cite a source, then the, other, the sentence that comes after is another citation. That is what we call cosmetic framing. It means that you're not actually having a conversation. You are just putting sources on the paper. So when it says it was reported in a study that parents use leather belts as a means of reprimanding their children, um, this report attests to the fact that child abuse is a social ill. So the person is now going to the narrow topic or the focus of the paper. So these two sentences are what is called background. Then you have what is called the thesis, which is the central or the, the, the part of the, 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 the last sentence, sentence in the introduction that tells the reader the focus of the paper. Understand? Do we understand? Yes, sir. So we have the opening, we have the background sentences, we have the thesis, right? So here's another example. Um, how does this writer start the introduction? How does the writer start this introduction? Sure. So with a definition, right? Do we see a thesis? So first of all, where is the thesis statement located in the introduction? Um, Jerome, I understand Jerome not talking. Um, remember, this is for everybody. Where's the thesis located in the introduction? I told you earlier. No one remembers? It is the last sentence in your introduction and it tells the reader the focus of the paper. Please remember, because that is how I'm going to mark your tutorial paper and that is how I'm going to mark your research paper. If you don't have it, you cannot pass the course. Please ensure that you're paying attention. All right, so the, you have an opening, which is the opening sentence or sentences, and then you have a close for the introduction, which is called the thesis. I don't like that introduction. Let's look at an example that is related to the course. Um, so let me go into turn it in. Um, do, does it go into, no, I don't want to write the conclusion. The other thing I wanted to know now is the thesis statement and, and in this it's not there. So let me kind of put this slide, the thesis, thesis statement. So the first thing, it is the last sentence in the introduction. It is a statement and must not be written as a question. It has two to three sub claims or points to be developed in the body of the essay. Everybody understands this? So example, let's go back now to this paper. Let's go back to, th to this. Right, let's try and write uh, an example of a thesis for this. So this is our question. This is the question. Example of a thesis. Right. So you are you have been asked to write on this and let me reduce the size so that we can. 
And then now you want to write a thesis. which is the focus of the paper or what you plan to talk about. So this says referring a specific region or country explore the impact of any one to two international businesses. So the thesis is based, the key word for you to write your thesis on is what? Impact. This is the root word that you're going to use. In other words, you're going to actually put three impacts in your thesis statement. Tell me if you understand that. Hello. So can you can repeat for me, please. So I'm saying when you look at a look at a question, there is a word in it that is the focus of the paper that you will have to use to, to develop your thesis. So remember we said in the thesis now that the thesis has two to three subclaims. Two to three subclaims, right? And in other words, there's a root, there's a, there's a word in your, there's a word or phrase in your, in, in the question that determines what you're going to develop in the paper. So let's look at the, so let's just say that you're de developing number two. So the root word in this one is impact. So this is the word, this is the word that we're going to use to, to develop or subclaim in the thesis. What would you say is the root word or what would be the root word or phrase in number two? You're seeing my screen, right, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. What would be the root word or phrase in number two? In number two. In other words, what word in that, what word or phrase indicates what will be developed in the body of the paper? Sir, international trades? Is, is, the, is the paper focused on international trades? Sir, international trades since the beginning of the system, yeah. It cannot be so long, it cannot be that long. It's either a word, it's usually one or two words, it cannot be that long. It's, all, it's usually one to three words, either one word, two words or three words, but it can't be the entire sentence. Then it means that you don't understand the question. Remember in number one, it says explore the impact. It means that is, that is what is going to be developed in the paper. The impact is going to be developed in the paper. So in number two, what would be, what, would, what are you trying to develop in the paper in number two? All right, not so sure. What about number three? Let's try number three. If number two is kind of give you a challenge, what, would, what, are, what is the focus or what are, what are you trying to develop in, in the body of the paper in number three. Uh, the roles of the international body. Just roles you're trying to develop, or if you want to say roles of international bodies, right. So that's the root, that's the, that, that would be the focus or the controlling idea in number three. What about, Let's go back to number two now. What are you trying to develop in um, develop in the body of the paper in number two? The evolution. Exactly. So we are trying to develop the evolution of trade theories, or if you want to say evolution, but usually it's evolution of trade theories, right? In number four, what are you trying to develop in the body of the paper? number four what are you trying to develop in number four or number five or number six what exactly are you? let's go to number six what are you trying to develop in the body of the paper in number six
strategy? Exactly. You're trying to develop strategies. This is exactly what the focus is. You're trying to develop strategies. In number five, what are you trying to develop in number five? What are you trying to develop in number five, guys? Hello? There are reasons. Yes, reasons. Um, let me just do a count. Um, I want verbal response. Gab um, Gabriel, please respond. Sir, I just responded. Okay. Can you respond for me? Sir, I'm, I'm not sure to be very honest. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to answer. I just want to know that you're physically there. Um, Rachel, respond for me, please. Yes, sir. Right. I need for you to participate. I haven't heard you said anything in the class. All right. I need for you to participate. All right, so we said reasons for here, right? So we are trying to develop reasons here. Um, what about number four? What, would, what are we trying to develop in number four? We're trying to develop one of two things because there, this is why you have a slash. Is that a one or the other? What are we trying to develop in number four? Oh. We're trying to develop? How? Oh. You're trying to develop how? A descriptive or prescriptive international trip. Well, I can't use more words. Yeah, you can use. So you're trying to develop prescriptive, either descriptive international trade theories or prescriptive international trade theories. So you're trying to develop one of two things in the paper, right? So it's important that you understand that when you're writing an academic paper, what are you trying to develop in the body? What are you trying to prove? It's very important that you understand that. So this is sometimes why students write papers and they wonder why they fail because they don't understand the question or they don't understand how to write an academic paper. Give me one sec. So now that we know that we are trying to develop impact, we can write a thesis, right? We can write a thesis. So it says, referring a specific region or country, explore the impact of any one or two international businesses or international organizations. In other words, what are the impacts? So we might say, let us say we decide that we're going to talk about one or two international businesses. So let us say we're going to do one. So give me the name of an international business. Let us say we say, um, which one, give me the name of an international business or we can kind of use the question. Can anybody think of an international business? So let's just say we're going to use an international business. Let's say we're going to use um, Amazon. So Amazon as an international business. All right, so first of all, we need to talk about the impact. What are some of the, you, so this is where research comes into play now. What would you, what are some of the, the impacts of, let's just say we choose Amazon. What would you say are some of the impacts of Amazon as an international business? in let's just say the Caribbean. What would you say are some of the impacts of Amazon 
in the Caribbean. I am listening. Sir, um, mm -hmm. I think it's made it extremely easy for us to, um, to get stuff that aren't made in the Caribbean area or in our country. Mm -hmm. So, um, making products easier to access. What else? Sir, so, um, I believe Amazon also provides a platform for businesses to become international. Um, providing, so let's say providing, uh, let's say commercial platform for some businesses. What else? And can we say two to three? So let's say we're going to talk about you. So making products easier to access, providing a commercial platform for some businesses and what else Amazon does? I am listening. Anything else, guys? There are, there are three, two other persons in the class. You need to talk okay i am not going to say anything and if the time runs out time runs out but remember you will not be passing my course by writing any fruitful essay okay so i suggest you participate what else does amazon um do people I'm um, sorry, market ones, sir, advertise ones and advertise local or regional goods. We can say no. So we have, so we have the, remember we said two to three subclaims. So these are the claims, the subclaims, because we're talking about, so the subclaims are based on the root word or phrase in the, in, the, in, the, in the question. So making products easier to access, providing a commercial platform for some businesses and advertising regional, um, let's say regional um, products are some of the impacts of Amazon in the Caribbean. Right? So remember now it says referring to a specific region or country. Have we done that in this question? Because we're going back to the question, you know, because we're trying to determine whether or not we have answered the question. Have we have we referred to a specific region or country? Um, sorry, you just said the Caribbean? Yes, so the region is the Caribbean. So have we explored the impacts? Have we explored the impacts? Yes, sir. Right, and because we have stated them, right? And then we said, have we selected one or two international businesses? Yes, sir. Exactly, right? So it means that we have a thesis. So remember, this would be the last sentence of the introduction. So making products easier to access, 
Providing a commercial platform for some businesses and advertising regional products are some of the impacts of Amazon in the Caribbean. So this is a thesis statement, right? And it would be the last sentence of the introduction. If time allows, we probably can, um, to some extent, try to um, write uh, an introduction for the question. So sample introduction, we might say sample introduction. So if we can sometimes, so if we carry this over, we know that we have the last sentence of the introduction. We would probably just need to determine how we're going to start. Let's take this off. So this is our thesis, um, referring a specific region or our country. Uh, so we might start out by making a statement like this is our opening international businesses continue to play a, let's say, fundamental role in different in different parts of the globe, right? So we have our opening. So international business is based on the question we're trying, referring a specific region or country, explore the impact of, of um, any one or two international businesses. So we might say, so we have our opening, we have our thesis, but we need another sentence. Um, two, two or so background sentences. We might say international business continue to play a fundamental role in. We might say mm, Tesla, Burger King, and Amazon and Amazon have, for example, invested over 20, and this is, I'm making it up guys, so, you know, this is not accurate, over $20 billion in the Caribbean. So this would have to come from a source. I might say Brown 2020, 2015. So I've, I kind of introduced Amazon here because I know that that's where my thesis is going. So I, I would say, um, so international businesses, da, 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 Tesla, Burger King and Amazon have, for example, invested over $20 billion in the, in the Caribbean. Amazon in particular has, so with, I might say with this level of investment, need to reduce the size. So with this level of investment, by key players such as mm, for example in this region. Oh, so this level of investment, but I want to zoom in on Amazon. So I might say key players. Oh no, I, I might say fifteen. Just remember I'm making up this this people, fifteen billion of which was by Amazon yeah then i'm going to remember i said to you, once you cite a source you're going to interpret it this level of investment 
by Amazon. has impacted the region in many ways. And this is where now I'm going to tweet my thesis, my thesis. I probably could make it so, so making products easier to access. So I could just say these ways are these ways include, or if you want to put back the word, making products easier to access, providing a commercial platform for some, and advertising regional products. I, I probably would say regional goods and services. And yeah, boom, you have an introduction. Here's your thesis. Here's your opening, and you have your background sentences in the middle. And this is your background. Right? Do we understand that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. And we can look at a, a one or two examples on um, that are specific to the course. So international business, let's just, let me go to the ones that are, so for example, this one, let me see if this was a good introduction. Not really. Yeah, so this was not a, well-developed introdu introduction, but yeah, I think this was a much better one. Was this? No, this was not a good one. So, um, oh, let me download the paper. So I can, I'm going to, I'm going to insert it in the lecture uh, as an example. So, that, and then upload the lecture to, this is an example now of, oh, I can do it as a screenshot. So it's easier for you to, no. Let me do it as a screenshot. So you see the tutorial question and, and put it on another slide, which becomes a sample. So that's the introduction. So let's insert it here. So this is another, this is an example to of an introduction, right? Um, the other thing I'll do is to find a quick video. No, I don't want to use this. Let me see if I can find the link quickly. Writing an introduction for an essay. Okay, hopefully I find one that is, right, here is one. Let me stop here because I don't remember if I've turned on the audio. Yeah, I didn't. And this should give you a summation. And then we're going to get into writing the body paragraph. Listen, please. So you've got an idea for a business, the store of your dreams. There's The introduction paragraph is the first part of your essay, and it's important to start strong. A great introduction grabs your reader's interest and tells them what to expect. You can write one in four steps. Just keep watching. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Step 1. Hook your reader. Your first sentence sets a tone for the whole essay. This sentence is often called the hook because you want to catch a reader and reel them in. Avoid long and dense sentences. Start with something clear, concise, and catchy that will spark curiosity. So you're writing an essay about the history of the Braille writing system. We want to start by saying something like, Braille was a very important invention. Sure, that tells us what the essay is about, but it's a bit plain and boring. Let's try turning it into a hook. The invention of Braille was a major turning point in the history of disability. That's more like it. Instead of just stating our topic, we're making a bold claim about its place in history and linking it to relevant social themes. 
The phrase turning point hints at the big changes we're going to discuss without giving too much away just yet. What does your introduction sentence look like? Pique my interest in the comment below. I'm curious. Step two, give background information. Next, give your reader the background they need to understand your argument. Depending on the subject of your essay, this might include describing the historical or social context, defining key terms, introducing relevant theories or research, setting up the different sides of a debate. But don't overdo it here. Save your evidence and interpretation for the main body of the essay. In our Braille example, we first introduce the topic. The writing system of race dots used by visually impaired people was developed by Louis Braille in 19th century France. And then sketch the social context that the essay will address. In a society that did not value disabled people in general, blindness was particularly stigmatized and lack of access to reading and writing was a significant barrier to social participation. The idea of tactile reading was not entirely new, but existing methods based on sighted system were difficult to learn and use. Step three, present your thesis statement. Now it's time to narrow your focus and show exactly what you wanna say about the topic. This is your thesis statement, a sentence or two that sums up your overall argument. It's the most important part of your introduction because it defines the focus of your whole essay. A thesis isn't just a statement of fact, but a claim that requires evidence and explanation. The goal is to clearly convey your own position in a debate or your central point about a topic and to indicate the reasoning behind it. So the main point of our essay is to show why Braille was such an important invention. The thesis statement sums up the two stages of our argument. The All right, so I'm sure you realize that is pretty much what I said to you that she's kind of repeating, right guys? The other thing now that you want to do after you have write, written your introduction now is to develop the body of the essay. And how you do that is all the parts, the claims that are in your, in your essay. So um, include making products easier to access, providing a commercial platform for some businesses to, and advertising regional goods and services. Three, that's actually what you're going to develop. So this is actually paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three, right? So that's pretty much, so let me, I think I have it um, elsewhere in the paper. I don't want to touch conclusion yet. Let's go to body. Um, not yet. Let me not do it that way. Uh, okay. Um, do I know? Let me just teach it from, from, from the way I'm doing it. All right. So the important thing to note is that you, however, you have your points in your introduction, that is how they have to be developed in the body paragraph. Um, so that what's, so let me ask you, what is the first point you're going to develop in your body paragraph based on this thesis? I am listening, guys. What's the first point you're going to develop in the body paragraph? Based on that thesis. Hello, do you understand the question? Gabriel, do you understand my question? Or Gabriel, do you understand my question? I'm not hearing you so clearly. Would it be how Amazon makes products easier to access? Right. So that would be the first point to, de to be developed. What would be your second point to be developed? Do 
Jerome, what would be the second point to be developed in the body? Jerome, are you there? Um, Kenya, what would be the second point to be developed? Kenya, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm reading it to um I'm reading it, sir. I'm trying to figure it out. But the points are underlined, guys. As if you guys are not listening. The points are underlined, you know. If the first point is making products easier to access, what is the second point to be developed? Providing a commercial platform for some businesses. And the third point would be advertising regional goods and services. Right. So you have the introduction. So the body now is. So we have what is called the body of the essay or body paragraphs. Pa, that's not para. Paragraphs. This is developed um, exactly how the points are laid out, are made in the introduction, right? So making easy to access, we can copy and paste, and then we put it in sentence form once we're finished. So this would be, the second one would be providing commercial a commercial platform for whatever, um, and then the third point would be advertising points. This is a third point, but of course this topic sentence, they're called topic, you would form what are called topic sentences, but they have to be in sentence form. So based on what we're we are proving, we're seeing that Amazon has has impacted the Caribbean in many ways. So we could probably say one way of how Amazon has impacted the, the Caribbean, if you want to say region, is that it makes or it helps people to access, we can just put it as, is that it helps, same sentence said, said in another, it helps people to have greater access to some, to makes access to some products. It makes, no, I'm, I'm people to have, easier access to some products to have easier access to some products right let's take off the green and all of that or probably put it in another color we don't need the the underline so one way of how amazon has impacted the caribbean is that it helps people to have easier access to some products um how would you phrase your second sentence? Because this now becomes your second. This, so this, in other words, this is the first sentence of the first body paragraph. How would you phrase the phrase it for the for the second point? How would you phrase it? I am listening, guys. How would you phrase the second point? Which is providing a commercial platform for some businesses. How would you phrase it? Make it into a full sentence, I should say. How would you make it into a full sentence? Like number one. I am listening. Gabriel, Gabriel, how would you phrase it? Jerome, Kenya, Rachel, how would you phrase? Make number the second point into a sentence. Say 
Sarah, could it be the second way of how Amazon has impacted the Caribbean is that it provides a commercial platform for some businesses? Yeah, so we could say, you could just say another way of how Amazon, that's not Amazon, Amazon impacts, that's not impacts, impacts the Caribbean is that it, I think you said provides, right? Provides a commercial platform for some businesses. Yeah, and that's okay. We just need to remove the underline. So how would we phrase for the last one? I think we need to reduce the size of, this, of the font. Let's make it 28. How would we phrase the last one? I am listening, guys. How would you phrase it? I'm listening. I hope time doesn't run out because I need to show you how to develop the body paragraph or to write a reference list and all of that. So I hope you... Um... The final way or the, the last way. So I like the first part, what you said, the final way. Of how mm. Amazon has impacted the Caribbean is that. Okay, so we have the whole already. So let's copy this. So let's take this off, create a space here. So the final way of how Amazon impacts the Caribbean is that advertising region, it helps. Um, let's say um, businesses advertise their goods and services. Can we say that? Yes, sir. Advertise, advertise their goods and services, right? So these are what are called topic sentences. So it's the first sentence of the body paragraph, the first sentence. These are what are called topic sentences, right? So each first sentence, in other words, you're going to write out for it to be a full paragraph. This would be a full paragraph. So we can copy. Let's try to work with one copy and put onto another slide. And then now you get into writing a body paragraph. Writing a body paragraph, right? That's not paragraph, paragraph, writing a body paragraph. So this, this becomes, this is the first sentence of your body paragraph. One of the things that you have to do in the body paragraph, you now you need at least two pieces of evidence, usually from a source. And you need to analyze slash interpret each piece of evidence. Have it, anyone has ever heard this structure about the T structure? So topic sentence, evidence and analysis, have you ever heard this? It's topic, topic sentence, evidence and analysis. Anybody has ever heard? That's actually how you write a body paragraph. Let's listen to let me find uh, a quick video, T body paragraph, right here it is. These things are actually lis listening to you, you know, I I'm very scared. Oh, let's so previously when we were using spreadsheets, we were heavily meeting dependent. It took us hours. To so let's skip this. For every major assessment in world history. Let me put it to the link in the chat and in the WhatsApp group as well. 
eventually I'll put it in the WhatsApp group. So let's listen to how you actually develop a body paragraph, right? For every major assessment in world history, you will be asked an extended response question that will need to be written in a specific format, a T paragraph. The format of this paragraph is also very effective when writing body paragraphs for essays. In a T paragraph, every letter of T refers to a specific element of the paragraph. The T is the topic sentence, the E is the evidence in the paragraph, and the A is the analysis needed in the paragraph. For this example, we will be working with an example essay question. The printing press was a very important invention in the Western world. Explain how it impacted learning in Europe. Be sure to give specific examples. A topic sentence is simply a sentence that covers the main idea of a paragraph. I know you have written these before. Remember, the rules you learned about writing in English class apply to writing in other classes. Paragraphs need the topic sentence as a signal to the reader, telling what your paragraph is about. Don't forget the topic sentence should be written in third person. Also, be as specific as you can in the topic sentence about what evidence you are going to present. Notice the topic sentence, highlighted in green, shows you the paragraph is about the printing press and also includes evidence I will include in my answer. Encourage scholarly research, spread of religious ideas, and increase the public's knowledge. Evidence is the information you will include to explain the topic. In an English essay, your evidence is often a quote from the novel you're reading. In a social studies class, the evidence might be a quote, but it also might be a fact or statistic. A good rule of thumb about how much evidence for you to use is three pieces of evidence per paragraph. In most situations, that's an appropriate amount of support to inform the reader. If you're ever uncertain, ask your teacher. In this paragraph, the evidence is highlighted in blue. Sometimes my evidence was a couple of sentences long. Please note that this is exactly how I'm going to mark your body paragraph. So I'm going to look for the T, look for your T, which is a topic sentence, and I'm going to look for the pieces of evidence. And then I'm going to look for what is called analysis. So you present the evidence, then you analyze, you present the evidence, then you analyze, you present the evidence, then you analyze, and then you have the closing sentence for the body paragraph. Let's listen. Long. And sometimes it was only part of a sentence. It is okay for you to have that kind of variety in the evidence you use. Analysis is sometimes a difficult topic to grasp. For a social studies response, analysis is often a description of the meaning or the impact of your evidence. Looking at our paragraph response, the analysis is highlighted in purple. The analysis, sentences, and phrases explain how the facts about the printing press, like how many books were published, or what type of texts were published, impacted the people of Europe. One last element to add to your T paragraph, if you have the time, is a concluding sentence which wraps up the paragraph. In our example paragraph, the last sentence in pink draws a final conclusion about how all the evidence and analysis about the printing press impacted Europe. All right, Normally so makes communication at work one click simpler. I'm going to why are they keep saying this Whether ridiculous you're looking for videos? God. Let me go back and just go to the end. For every example paragraph, the last sentence in P. All right, so I'm going to take a screenshot of this so that you can. It's very important that when you write your body paragraph, all of these things are present. The T is present, the E is present, the A is present, and the concluding sentence. Um, so this is the link. This is the screenshot. All right, any questions? Anybody doesn't understand exactly what we're talking about in terms of developing the body paragraph? Is it that we all understand? Sir. Uh-huh. Yeah, evening, Kemar. Yes. Um, sorry to interject with a different um thing still. I understand the body paragraph to a sense. Yeah, but um actually I don't mean to interrupt you. 
in terms of the uploading through the turning team, right? I would like you to guide me through that. So tell me if I may do something wrong or Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it at the, at the, when, in the last few minutes, I'll show you how to do it, okay? All right, sir. Okay. So it's important that you, you are able to, let me just share back screen in terms of developing your body paragraph because, and I hope, Kemar, that you're going to relook at, revisit your paper so that you're following all the guidelines that I'm giving you now to ensure that those things are there, that your T is there, your E is there, your A is there, and your concluding is there for your body, par um, for your body paragraph. That's very critical. Okay. So um, this is, this is what? Why is this all the way down here? This is supposed to be here, right? Because this is body paragraph. Let's look at an example on, let's look at an example on um, uh, Turnitin. Did I close Turnitin? So let's look at an example. Was this a good? All right, so let me go back and see if I, I think the research paper might be a better one. Because this person kind of organized it a little bit different. Right, let me look at this one. Specifically, don't want to use the research paper because people will. All right, so yes, so this would be a, a quote unquote an example of, of a body paragraph that we can use as an example. So I'm just going to, I'm going to reduce it for the purposes of from to 1.5 so it can fit within and then screenshot it so that you can actually see. So this uh, body paragraph, come on, where? body paragraph, let's, let me just insert it in this so that you can see it. So if we look at this example in particular, you can see the topic sentence, even though if there are, even if there are grammatical issues. Potential for new revenue is one of the reasons why a business may choose to go international. So we see the topic sentence. And then in this now you see the body. And then of course, an increase in revenue is proof that expanding, and this is the actual concluding sense. So this is actually a very a well written body paragraph. Probably I need to put, um, put back the title. Uh, let's go back to, come on, this thing is just text box. Are you not, it's text box, what is wrong? And do sample body paragraph so this is a this is a, this is an example of a, of a body paragraph where it is home center let's do this save i'm going to upload this to 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 so this is an example of a body paragraph very very important that you understand how to write a body paragraph so in other words this is what you're going to convert when we were here, you're going to convert each of these into an actual body paragraph. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. All right, the other thing I want to touch on is citing evidence from sources. This is critical, citing evidence from sources. There are three ways of how you can cite. So there are, three ways to cite evidence from a source. No, let me not go that way. Let's undo that. What the, I said go like this. I want you to go even further, right? And increase the size. You have direct quotation, Q-U-O-T, Quotation, summary, or paraphrase, para, P H R A S E, or paraphrase. These are the three ways of how you cite sources in a paper. Okay. 
can you oh let me go back because you have to use APA you must write the last name in brackets and the year of publication. Let's reduce the size for this. This is too large. Example, Clark 2000, 2017. The source cannot be over 10 years. I'm hoping I, you understand all these things. You, these things are things that you should have been taught before. You know, I shouldn't be teaching you these things, but I'm seeing a lot of weaknesses in the in the papers. So the source cannot, years, huh? 10 years. No, yes, it can't be over 10 years. Come like me right over all of me. That's why I'm teaching it. That's why I tell you, I said, don't upload it yet. Don't upload it yet. It can't be over 10 years. Right? It can't be over 10 years. It's very, very critical. Um, so let's look at an example about citing sources. It's actually in this lecture. Um, citing sources. So here they do. Well, this is just telling you the types of so citing sources. Let me just go to that slide. Um, so here's an example of, of a source being cited. You have the topic sentence, you have the last name. So there are two ways. It's kind of, it's called, um, uh, what is called integrated citation and non-integrated citation, where if the source starts a sentence, the last name does not go in bracket. But if the source ends the sentence, then it goes in bracket. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. All right, so this integral citation. Yeah, here it is. Integral, integral citation, and then you have non-integral citation. Searching for a better way to collaborate with your team? Try Miro, an online whiteboard made for teamwork. Everyone's welcome. Project managers to product managers. So let me Designers, share that. Developers. Skip. Hi there, I'm Christopher Shepard. And I'm Adrian Chang. And we're here to talk to you about how you can integrate your references into your paragraphs. But don't worry, adding citations to essays is not hard when you know how to do it. And doing it right will help you to get higher marks in your assignments. Absolutely. We use references as a way to show your reader where you found your information. It also shows your teacher that you've done your research and understood it. It certainly does, and it can help to show that an expert agrees with what you're saying. This is the supporting evidence in your essay. But the trick is, how to use citations effectively? First, let's review the structure of a paragraph. Usually, it starts with a topic sentence. This tells the reader what the paragraph will be about. Then you have your supporting evidence. This would include citations and examples to support the topic sentence. And the paragraph should end with a concluding sentence that links back to the topic sentence and the main idea of the essay. Right, so let's look at an example, shall we? So did the writer do anything right here? Well, yes. There is correct use of quotation marks, and the citation is correctly referenced. Here you can see APA style. And here's IEEE -E -E style. But there are quite a few problems. Yes. First, the complete sentence is copied. It is better to only quote the key words. Second, the quotation starts the paragraph, and it's not related to the rest of the paragraph. And third, the writer does not comment upon or explain the citation. So now let's look at a good example. Well, as you can see, first this paragraph starts with a topic sentence. We now know what the paragraph will be about. Next, the quotation is integrated into a sentence with only five words quoted rather than a complete sentence. The writer uses according to to introduce the views of others. Another way to introduce a citation is to use a reporting verb such as point out or believe. But you need to be careful about what reporting verbs you use. Verbs like say and tell should not be used in academic English. 
Yes, and be careful with claim. If I say that a student claims to have done her homework, but she left it at home, it means I don't fully believe her. Claim is used in a similar way in academic writing. Using less common verbs is another way to enhance your writing. Don't only use verbs such as state. Finally, the writer goes on to explain the citation. Remember, your teacher wants to know what you've understood from doing the background reading. Show this by explaining the citation and giving examples to illustrate your explanation. That is what is called critical analysis, as, as I was explaining before. You cannot just cite the source and leave it. The sentence that comes after the citation must be an interpretation of the source um, in relation to the topic sentence. Okay, a few things to remember when using quotations. Use the exact words of the authors and put those words in quotation marks. Try to keep your quotations short. Only quote the most important words. With APA and Harvard referencing style, you need the author, followed by the year, page or paragraph number in round brackets to show where the quote came from. And with IEEE -E -E referencing style, you need the author, followed by the reference number in square brackets. And if your quotation is over 30 words, you need to indent it like this. But generally, in your university assignments, you should only have a small number of short quotations. Remember to always check with your teacher or program leader about any specific referencing requirements. The other way to add a citation to a paragraph is to paraphrase the idea of the author. This means you take the idea that someone else has had and you rewrite it in your own words. But remember, this is still someone else's idea, so you still need to reference it. But when you use your own words, it shows that you have understood it better than just using a quotation. Here is an example of the original text. And the paraphrased text below it. Notice how key words and ideas have been rephrased. And remember, you still need to cite the authors. So far, we've looked at integral citations. This means a citation that is part of a sentence. We often use integral citations when we want to highlight the author. With integral citations, you need to introduce it using a reporting verb such as argue or an introductory phrase such as in the view of. However, if you want to highlight the information in a paragraph, then you can use a non-integral citation. As you can see in this example, the information is more important than the author, so author details are put in brackets at the end of the sentence. With the APA or Harvard style, it's done this way. And with IEEE -E -E style, you just need the reference number in square brackets like this. There are many ways you can integrate citations into your work and it will always depend on the sentence grammar and the information. If you're still stuck, don't forget you can always ask the staff in the SIL for help. Or you can ask your teachers. And remember to look at the online referencing guides. We hope this has helped you to understand how you can use references in your writing. Use this information well and your academic writing will improve a lot. Good luck! Bye! All right, so again, that is helping you in terms of in-text citation, which is very, very important. And as I said before, each body paragraph needs at least two pieces of evidence, which must come from at least two um, sources. Very, very critical. The last thing I'll, I'll make mention of because of time and the presenters you're all going to go on Friday is how to write a conclusion. Um, where do I have that slide? So yeah, conclusion, all right. So let me just share screen quickly and touch on conclusion, writing a conclusion. So a conclusion now is really a summation of what was discussed in the body of the paper. And I usually advise students to, to do this in their conclusion. So it is important to, that each topic sentence is restated or echoed in the conclusion. Um, if there are three topic sentences, there should be at least one sentence summarizing each of them. The conclusion can also make recommendations, but it should never introduce a new point. Um, the final sentence of your conclusion called a clincher and is called a clincher and should leave a strong and or lasting impression on the reader. That's very, very important that you have a, 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 very, a good conclusion. I always say to students that begin your conclusion by um, echoing your thesis statement. So just rephrasing your thesis and you can say in conclusion so that the, the reader 
knows that you're actually bringing the, the, the paper to a close. That's very, very critical that you're bringing the paper to a close. The last, last thing I'll make mention of now is writing the reference list. And I, I'll share the slides with you, writing the reference list. So APA, um, it's not seven. Are we at seventh edition? Yeah, we had seventh edition. Um, these videos are too long. Yeah, this one can work. Let's see what they say. I don't know that you're seeing this thing. It just doesn't look like it's sharing to me. Really make sharpening your resume easy. Work On the APA reference page, you list all the sources that you've cited in your paper. The list starts on a new page right after the body text. It's very important to follow the APA guidelines. There are specific guidelines for formatting the page itself and the references in the list. In this video, you'll learn how to do it effortlessly. Stay tuned! Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber. Here to help you achieve your academic goals. The reference page follows the general APA formatting guidelines. If you're not sure what they are, check out this video first. I'll quickly set it up now. Choose a legible and widely accessible font, like 12 point Times New Roman, one inch page margins, and double line spacing. This is an example of a student paper, so we don't need to insert a running head only a page number. Now, place the section heading references in bold and center it at the top of the page. Moving on to the references. There are different rules to create references for books, journal articles, websites, and more. There are two ways you can create your references, either manually or use a citation generator. I'll first show you how to do it easily with Scribber's free citation generator. Let's say I want to cite an article. Click on Journal, search the article by title, double check the information, and cite source. When you finish entering all the references, you can copy the entire list. It's important to sort the references in alphabetical order based on the author's last names. If you copy them from Scribber's Citation Generator, the references are automatically in alphabetical order. All that's left to do is format the references with hanging indents like this, which basically indents all the lines except the first. Select the entire list, pull the arrow on the ruler to half an inch, and the rectangle back to zero. And we're done. If you want to learn how to create references manually, click on this video or read more in the article below. You can play around with the options in the citation example generator to get familiar with APA style. Remember, you only need to include references for sources you've actually cited in the body text. For some student papers, it's common to describe or evaluate the source in an annotation. Place the annotations on a new line below the corresponding reference entry. You don't need an, any annotations, okay? You are actually doing only APA reference list, all right? So that part is um, not important. You can actually watch some videos to help you. And as I said before, this is something that you, the, 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 the college should have ensured that you have those particular skills so that I, I don't have to use the time to be teaching you this, but I am concerned because I'm seeing some papers that I am very concerned about. They don't have any thesis. Is it, students don't, some students don't know how to actually write an academic paper. Um, on Friday, I will, you will do your presentations um, as well as I'll speak to the final exam and also we'll speak to the, the research paper, which is something that I think you will need some, um, uh, some assistance with. Um, I'll get into the whole uploading of Turnitin and all of that. Um, the, there was something else that I wanted to tell you. Uh, what was it again? slipped me a while ago it was in my head oh yes for for um i think it's i think i had the paper open let me just see if i could open it um give me one sec guys i know that, that we have run out of time but i want to just clarify something for okay just quickly i'm just going to canvas very quickly Okay. I think I might have this 
Yes. I hope they, I hope I don't have to go in and mark that thing in a Kazai. Okay, this is for. All right, so for. For Kenya and Rachel, do number six and don't do number nine because I haven't taught international exchange rates. So don't do that question. Do number six instead, okay? So leave number seven and do number six. You're not doing the paper together. You're doing it on your own. So each student, three pre present, presenters on Friday, so Gabriel and we'll do our own presentation. Kenya will do our own presentation and Rachel will do our own presentation on number six. Is that clear? Is that clear, everybody? Hello? I'm sorry, therapy, please. I just got back into the class. You are going to do number six. Don't do number seven, because I haven't taught um, foreign exchange rate, and I don't want you to present on something that I've never taught, OK? That's one of my went to present. Friday. Friday is our last class. OK, sir. OK. Any any questions or from anybody else or everything is clear? Sir, like yes. coming into something, well, I'm not even know if it fully upload on Trinity. We can't no, edit do it not. And... You have to edit it. I don't want you to upload any footages and give me. So make sure you I'm going to make sure to upload the the lecture and the recording so that you can go back through it and do a proper paper. And then you can start working on your research paper as well. All okay. right, sir. Yeah. All right, any quest any other questions or comments or queries from anybody else? All right, have a good night, everybody. And you know you can reach out to me via Yes. Sir, where you don't want to assign the question for the research paper, are we supposed to just choose? You have to choose. You, but you, it can't be something that you have written on already in um for for the present for the tutorial. So you can't repeat the same topic for the research paper. Okay, sir, sir, uh, we're going to have to communicate with each other to make sure that we don't do the same question as well, right? No, 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 no. You're not communicating anybody. So if you have written a paper about international business, you can't write on the same topic for your research paper, which is different. So the research topic has to be different from what you have presented in class. Okay, sir. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any other question? Queries? No? All right. Have a good night, everybody.